you are clear with the concept now like let's now go back to conjugate the method here in this method we have two theorems to be followed if you understand these two theorems you can easily solve any problems so along with the theorem you need to do certain modification to the real beam and make a fictitious beam called the conjugate beams so therefore which you need to learn the beam supports so we have specific uh, slides which will represent to you the conjugate beam supports and we have certain examples for the conjugate beam method this method was usually initially developed by h muller bruslo in 1865 find the deflection of the structure subjected to bending we have similar computations like momentaria method where we have to very we have used in momentaria method the deflected profile and bending moment profile but here in uh, conjugate beam method uh, you will be using your when uh, conjugate beam as your m by i diagram with loading and supports defined in terms of conjugate beams so let us see how to do that and directly start applying the theory to solve the problems same it is used to do the evaluation of slope and deflection using the geometry of the elastic curve either in terms of deflection or in terms of bending moment diagram these are the basic mathematic analogies that you have studied in your uh, basics from the previous equations we know that change in slope that is d theta by tx is equal to m by ei these are the relationship between curvature slope and displacement these are displacement quantities and this is loading shear and moment this is force quantities so far when you have come across usually you might have given focus only to the applied load and the complete integration of the applied load will be your shear force and change in the shear force will give you the bending moment but now you are going to relate it to the displacement quantities where curvature is related to the slope and then to the deflection so d theta by dx which is again is equal to m by ei and dy by dx that is relating rotation with respect to curvature displacement with respect to rotation again displacement with respect to curvature so we are now finding the relation between rotation means uh, curvature rotation and displacement applied load w tv by dx if you integrate w you will get v again dm by dx is v if we integrate v you will get m similarly you can convert them in terms of applied loading again by just substituting this in terms of this location you will get the d square m by dx square is equal to w so each one is related to each other that's what i said you can just integrate the loading to get the shear integrate once again to get the bending so these are uh, reversible you can do it because it is under elastic conditions only so whatever you are getting that is all basically in terms of force quantity or real beam characteristics now i am going to arrange an another beam called a conjugate beam or a fictitious beam where i will obtain the load shear and bending moment from the conjugate beam using the curvature deflection and rotation that means if i i get a conjugate beam obtain the applied loading or obtain the shear force or obtain the bending moment if i calculate bending moment from the conjugate beam that represents the displacement of the beam of interest that means actual beam then if i calculate the shear force then i get the rotation in the actual beam if i calculate the loading
then that represents the MBEI diagram in the actual view. So let me clearly tell you. I am going to calculate a bending moment diagram of the given actual beam. Convert the beam into M by E I diagram. That is nothing but your curvature diagram, and apply it as a loading to the conjugate beam. If you calculate the shear force from the conjugate beam, that represents the required slope. If you calculate the bending moment from the conjugate beam, that represents the displacement. It is reversible. So, first theorem states that the slope at a point in real beam is numerically equal to shear at corresponding point in conjugate beam. That is what is explained in the previous slide. Similarly, theorem two. Displacement of a point in a real beam is numerically equal to moment at corresponding point in the conjugate beam. The same here. So let us say one by one here. In the real beam, I know that theta is not zero, but displacement is zero. I should get the conjugate beam in such a way that theta should not be equal to zero, but displacement. Should be zero. That means in the conjugate beam, theta is represented as shear force, and t delta is represented as bending moment. If I have to replace the support condition where I get bending moment equal to zero and shear force not equal to zero, that support condition I have to give it to the conjugate beam. So with support that can ensure that shear force is not equal to zero and bending moment is equal to zero. In the conjugate beam, that is only the same pin connection. In the second case, you have rotation again, again displacement zero. Again, when you convert this beam into a conjugate beam, you have here theta not equal to zero. That means I should ensure that in the conjugate beam, shear should not be equal to zero. Then delta should be equal to zero. That means I should ensure in the conjugate beam bending moment should should be equal to zero. In that case, I should ensure that I get a support condition in this way. So, two major things that you need to know in conjugate beam method is loading and support. Previously, we have seen the loading diagram, and from the loading diagram, whatever you get. As response quantities, we have related to the displacement quantities of the real beam, real model. Similarly, if you convert a conjugate beam, then you need to know the support system properly. So, to know the support system, you have to use the loading and loading and displacement quantities relation between the conjugate beam method. Let us say I have in a beam. I have an internal pin where slope is not equal to zero, but the vertical displacement equal to zero. I should provide a support in the conjugate beam in such a way that shear force should not be equal to zero, but bending moment should be equal to zero. So I cannot provide this pin support here because I cannot ensure that bending moment is zero here. If I have to ensure a bending moment to be zero, but shear should not be zero, then I should convert this support into a internal hinge. And the same thing holds for the roller also. Suppose if I am given in the real beam hinge directly, internal hinge or real hinge, then I have both rotation and displacement for this hinge. So I should have the conjugate beam in such a way that it should have the shear force and bending moment not equal to zero. Then I have to convert this hinge into either roller. Then, if it is a fixed support, it is clearly known to you that rotation is equal to zero and displacement equal to zero. So in the conjugate beam, both shear force and bending moment should be zero. In that case, I should ensure that the provided system is 
spring support condition. The same thing if I have a free end where I have rotation and displacement, if I have to make them to be equal to zero, then I have to fix them here. So these are the major correlation that you need to know while doing the conjugate beam method. So in conjugate beam method, first thing about the conjugate beam support and second thing is about the um, loading conjugate beam method. So for example, if it is a real beam and if it is a conjugate beam, these are the variations that we have. That means cantilever beam, if it is fixed here, then it should be free here. Then free end will become fixed, fixed end will become free. Then here, the support condition, if it is internal roller, then it will become an internal hinge. Free end will become fixed and the hinged end will become hinged. Then the next one, if it is fixed here and hinged here, then the internal hinge. Then this internal hinge will become a roller and fixed will become free and then the roller support will become the roller again. So these are the characteristics that the real beam, whatever it has, and it has to change to the conjugate beam using the load, slope, load, load, shear and moment and m by ei, theta and displacement relationship. We will not take much time. Now, why directly we will go to solve the problems. We can see the question one here. The beam is subjected to a load P at its end. Determine the slope and displacement at point C where EI is kept constant. Now, we are taking the approximate displacement profile of the beam. Don't worry about the next two diagrams. Just look at this diagram. First, calculate the bending moment diagram of this beam. So we have calculated bending moment at this point is minus PA. Previously we have calculated in the moment area method. So the bending moment diagram is now can converted into conjugate beam car loading. So that is M by EI diagram. So which is minus PA by EI and the total of this here is PA square by 2A and the total of this is PA square by EI. Now, we have to apply this as loading to the conjugate beam. So, loading diagram is ready. But we need to find out the supports for the conjugate beam. So, we take the same beam as it is. So, free end will become fixed. Internal roller will become internal hinge. And the hinge end will remain as it is. Now, we have to apply this M by EI diagram as loading to the conjugate beam. So, if you apply this here, since it is acting in the downward direction, you have to draw it like this. And I am just taking the half part here. Like I apply this M by EI as loading diagram here. And then at this hinge location, I am taking this half part separately. At this hinge location, I am taking this half part separately. And we can see here, this is the loading. And this is the half the beam. And you know the location and you know the CG of the loading. And that is clearly found here. And the same way it is here. Now you are taking the member AB. So if you are interested in finding the displacement and rotation at point C, now we are going to find that from here. So for member AB, if I cut the hinge, the unknown shear and unknown axial forces are VB and NB moment will be zero at the hinge so that will not be considered so the unknown shear is vb dash and the unknown shear here is vb dash using the force and moment equilibrium summation of force in the y direction equal to zero summation of moment about a known point you are taking to be equal to zero and you are finding out the required responses and required unknown shear coordinates Similarly, I am going to do for the right side element, member BC, summation of force in y direction 0 and summation of moment about your point equal to 0 and find out the unknown VB dash and RC dash. So once you know this, the moment that you calculated shows the displacement at the original beam. Is it clear? First problem. First 
problem is clear it is as simple as uh, uh, previous thing because previous one is you need to do all the tangents and get into all those drawings so that is basically semi graphical method moment area method but this is not like that again we have to find the slope and deflection at this point b of this cantilever beam with e and i value given so first draw the approximate deflected profile and bending moment and shear force drawing then apply the concept of conjugate beam convert the support condition of the real real beam into conjugate beam fixed end will be free end free end will be fixed end then take the bending moment diagram and apply it as a loading then if use the force and force and uh, moment equilibrium and find out the unknown response quantities once you do that the required bending moment and shear force will give you the required shear slope and deflection at the extent which will be equal to the slope and deflection of the original deflected core so we are going to take this one and find out the deflection by taking the this one as loading diagram if i find out the shear force and bending moment i get the displacement and rotation and you can use that value in this drawing the real b then it is the third problem where you have the beam subjected to a point load c at c and convert this first into bending moment diagram get the deflected shape convert the bending moment diagram into m by ei diagram apply it as a loading to the conjugate beam since the support condition for the conjugate beam and the real beam is same then use these two parts separately and calculate the unknown reaction quantities and find out the slope and deflection i am not going step by step here because it is clear you have to only use equilibrium equations and do this uh, simple calculations and get the required displacement and slope so it is a continuous beam but it is a overhanging beam again first draw the bending moment diagram you can see this is a parabolic bending moment diagram so apply this one as loading diagram and then at this internal hinge you have this so split the beam for this calculate the required unknown quantities for this calculate the required unknown quantities and then you find out the bending moment and shear force at this location and just get the value here which this value will be similar to the values that we have seen in the moment area method this method is with this uh, complete because uh, the similar approach will be uh, followed to get the required unknown quantities with this i'll wind up my lecture this lecture is very short because if you understand the most of the concept from the beginning then conjugate b method will be very simpler so that's why i gave more focus towards the moment area method but now with this concept if you follow this uh, example you can get the conjugate b method do you have any questions do you have any questions okay no oh, ma'am then we'll wind up the lecture because uh, it is as uh, continuous lecture uh, i thought of completing then and there but since you have one more session i thought i will take it separately if you have any questions we will take otherwise we'll wind up the session okay okay ma'am so thank you very much so it was a uh...
detailed, wonderful explanations. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, I think uh, you were not happy with the participants' interaction, though. Yeah, their interaction is too poor, so I didn't want to give much explanation. <laughs> sorry about that. So I'll give the presentation to you. You can share it with them. Yes, sure, ma'am. So on behalf of uh, the college and the participants here, thank you very much once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.